Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to onboard a Mac OS device to Microsoft Defender ATP. You'll notice that I have this Mac that I use as a test case here listed in my device inventory. This is after I've done the onboarding and I can see certain information here about the device and I'll get the telemetry if there is known risk or things on the device that I need to attend to on this page. So as far as the onboarding goes, you'll have to do a couple of different things here. This used to be a very manual process in which you had to configure as custom profiles within Microsoft Intune to configure on the Mac itself, such as the kernel extension and also the full disk access and things like that. They've actually automated a lot of this with the app that you can now deploy through the App Center. And you can also use a PowerShell script here that I'll show you to configure all the necessary configuration profiles for macOS onboarding. So here in the Endpoint Manager Admin Center, this is the result of running this PowerShell script that I'll show you here in a couple minutes, but it creates these four configuration profiles for macOS. One's for onboarding, one's for notification, one for kernel extension, one's for full disk access. Additionally, here under the app section, it goes ahead and it creates this macOS Defender ATP for macOS that you can use here to deploy. The one prerequisite you may want to do is create a 365 group that's specifically for your macOS users. The script itself can be applied to a group, and I just did macOS deployment here, and you'll want to put all your Mac users within this particular group just to apply these settings for all those users. So when they onboard their Mac devices, you can then just have them automatically get these certain settings and the application can be pushed out to the device as soon as they enroll into the Intune service. This is the main way of which you can actually deploy this out to the devices. You can also do a manual configuration on their device as well too. But if you're thinking about full management and then also applying the EDR and AV capabilities, you want to do it when you're enrolling devices in Intune as well. So this is the support article that I'll link below here, but it kind of describes what this PowerShell script is doing. It gives you a link to it as well too uh, from the GitHub repository, but basically it's showing you everything that it's doing here with each of the custom configuration profiles and then also the app itself. But you can read over these if you want. It's basically the, the biggest ones that you need to, to have in there is this kernel extension that trusts this assigned uh, cert from Microsoft, and then also the application itself, so you can actually onboard that. The onboarding package here points it to your particular tenant, and then this is giving you full disk access for heightened security features, and then this allows notifications to the users for really critical things that may be coming up on their device that they need to be aware of. So the first thing that you'll need to do here is install the XML package file from within your Defender Security Center. So you can go into the settings here and click on onboarding. You'll select Mac OS from the drop down here. And then for this, go ahead and select mobile device management and you'll click on download onboarding package, which will then give you this zip file on your particular computer that you're doing this on. And then from there, uh, you're gonna go ahead and run the PowerShell commandlets here and define where this is. Basically within this zip file, you'll have Intune as the folder. You can also deploy this with, with Jamf as a PLIST file but I'm, I'm showing you how to deploy it with Intune. And this is the Windows Defender onboarding XML file that you're gonna to want to link to. The PowerShell script will prompt you to put in the, the file path. So you'll wanna have this in a, in a handy place there or just understand where this is here so that you can link that and define this package file itself. So let's go ahead and, and pop into the GitHub page for the PowerShell script. So here, again, you have two scripts. You can just add all these things without assigning it to anybody, or you can go ahead and add an assign to a group. So it's up to you. I like to do it this way, just to assign it to that macOS de deployment group that I created. And this is the script here. You can, you can save this 
uh, locally and then call it within PowerShell or you could just simply copy and paste everything that's in here. So you want to run PowerShell as administrator. I've already got it saved. You can call the script or you can just paste the script in here and you can go ahead and run it here and it's saying hey what is your admin in this account you need to grant consent and then if you haven't already it's going to have to ask you to sign in here from there it's going to ask you to put in your path so again this is wherever this is located for you from there it'll ask you to define the Azure AD group that this is going to be assigned to. So again, I'll use my Mac OS deployment. And then it'll go ahead and start to publish these things within the tenant. So it'll deploy the app and those custom configuration profiles that we mentioned there. You can always pop back into the service itself. And in Intune, you can go to devices, Mac OS configuration profiles. And again, I duplicated these here because I already had them, but you'll see these populate here. From there, the thing that we have to do is just go onto the Mac and enroll it into Intune. And we'll see this in just a minute here with our demo. Here on the Mac, I've installed the company portal app and I'm just gonna go ahead and sign in with the user that's licensed with Intune and Microsoft Defender ATP. This user is also part of my Mac deployment group as well. So the big thing here is you'll go through this wizard and you'll need to configure certain settings here as part of this wizard and give access as a managed profile to Intune here on your personal Mac or if it's a corporate owned Mac as well. So I'll go ahead and click on begin it's telling you what you can and can't do as a management aspect of this. And then when you click on download profile here, it'll pull up your system preferences and the security privacy center and the profiles that are listed on the Mac itself so that you can approve this management profile. And this is the same process, no matter if you're looking at Defender ATP or just onboarding Intune in general just so you guys are aware. There's nothing different about this. So now we can go ahead and install this management profile that's been loaded from Intune. And you'll have to type in your password to make these changes as an admin. Now that that's been verified here, we can just click on done from the wizard. And this will take a couple minutes just for things to propagate, but we'll begin to see certain effects come through in the sense of the actual antivirus icon popping up on our top toolbar and things of that nature. So we'll be back here when that's done. Okay, so we're back here on the Mac and I have the ATP service fully installed now and there's no threats. I can run scans on demand from this device, but I can also do so from the management portal, which is typically where you're gonna do these, but you can also define certain settings here. This can again, all be configured via Intune in the management portal. Back in the Endpoint Manager Admin Center here, I can click on this newly enrolled MacBook, and I can see the status here as well too. If you're waiting for Defender ATP to install, I would come here to device configuration and just make sure you have these things that we've deployed via PowerShell in a succeeded status. If they're in fail, take a look at the failures. Sometimes with the kernel extension, you do have to approve it on the actual Mac device itself as well too, as far as going to the system preferences, security and privacy section, it'll ask you to approve Microsoft in some cases, but just make sure these are succeeded. And then in the app section, you may notice that it's still in a waiting status here and as far as the device install status or the uh, user install status, but in this case it shows installed as well because we have it on there. So you just want to keep an eye on that to report back for you in this portal. And then obviously you'll have the macOS device in the devices section of Defender ATP as well. 
That's everything I wanted to show for you guys in this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, please like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys.